Hi, hola, bonjour, guten tag, privet. What else? Bom dia. That's it, that's all I got. My name is Lauren Moon, and I am Trello's Senior Content Marketing Manager. And I've been with Trello since 2014, so that means I've spent the last four years telling the world how awesome Trello is. And I've done that by talking to users like you, learning about all their favorite workflows and boards and features, and I'm very excited to impart that knowledge on this group today. So whether you're a Trello user that's, you know, you're kind of just getting started and you're not sure if you're using the tool to its full capacity, or you're a total power user, um, I guarantee you that everyone here is gonna leave this talk learning something new about Trello. Ready? Yeah! That's the energy I like to see. So I'm gonna start with a big question, right? Uh, what is Trello? Well, it's kind of ironic because the answer is Trello at its core is a very simple tool, right? Like Michael said earlier, it's just boards, lists, and cards. That's it, right? But it's the simplicity of it that makes it so powerful. And the reason is what you can do with boards, lists, and cards is you can transform it into anything. It's infinitely flexible. You can take any workflow, you can let it evolve, you can change cards around, you can move lists around, you can make new boards, you can evolve your boards. So, it, it, honestly, the answers are endless. And that's why, whether you're using Trello to do your taxes, plan a vacation, do an agile sprint, plan your wedding, the, the question or the answer really is, what isn't Trello? So I've rounded up a bunch of boards for you. These are some of the most widely applicable, some of the most popular use cases of Trello. Um, so that, I, the reason I chose these was because it, it really doesn't matter what your position is at your company or um, what you're doing with Trello. These are, these are sort of widely applicable. And I'm gonna use them to show a few features. Okay, vacation planning, very common use case. This, by the way, is an actual screenshot of the board I used with my mom to plan our vacation to the Dominican Republic. I just wanna say something really quick. I love my mom. She's a wonderful lady. Her meatballs are the greatest on the eastern seaboard. But it was, believe me, it was not a guarantee that I was gonna get her to use Trello, right? And she was gonna be on board with it, you know? Um, but I said, you know, let's just try it out, right? She loved it. She totally loved it and she took to it. She is the pink avatar. And if you see in the done column, she moved those cards to done herself. And I subscribed to the board because I was genuinely curious. And when I got the notification that she moved the cards over, I cried tears of joy. I swear to you, it was amazing. Um, but you know what, there is a lesson there. And it's that she, you know, it really speaks to kind of the simplicity and the ease of Trello that someone who I promise you is not a digital native really totally took to it and loved it. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> the results speak for themselves. So basically, you can see what we did. We did sort of a, a mixture of flows here. We had a few to-dos on the far left, and we were moving them to done. And then we also had a few static lists, one of which was where we were sourcing places to stay. So one of my favorite features, I use this all the time, um, you can actually, if you're in another browser, you can just take the URL and drag it right over and it automatically adds a card. And for a lot of websites, including Airbnb and Amazon, it embeds all of this metadata. So look, it even embedded the picture, um, information, and when you go on the card back, there's even more uh, descriptions in there. So that's super helpful if you're just browsing the internet and you wanna drag a bunch of things right over really quickly. Um, another one is when you're doing holiday shopping and you wanna drag gifts over, love that. So this is sort of a fun tip. So all, all I'm doing here is just dragging and dropping. Magic. Okay, another very popular use case is meal planning. And this is another actual board that was made by our fabulous MC, Brian Servino. Um, in addition to hosting Trello Day, he moonlights as Emeril Agassi. 
he, um, he made this board, and as you can see, something I want to point out about this board is it's static, meaning that the cards are not going to move from list to list. He's, he's merely using this board to store information, which is actually another popular way to use Trello. So he has his list here. Um, they're sort of separating. He has pasta, he has seafood, meat, et cetera. But if you'll notice on the cards, he's using labels. And those are those color, those little colored bars above the card title. And when you click on the card, it looks like this. And you can see his label, he's using it to filter more information. So let's say that he, Brian's having a dinner party and there's a couple vegetarians there. So he says, I'm just gonna make the whole meal vegetarian. So he had, I mean, you saw that board, it was huge. There was a ton of recipes on it because he's a very prolific chef. I'm sure he'll have you all over later today. So what he can do is he can just filter for only the cards that have the label vegetarian. And that gives him an easier view of what he needs to see. And I love this feature for bigger boards because sometimes it's kind of overwhelming. Another use case you could see for this one is let's say you ha you're in, at work and you have sort of a longer term project and you want to break it up into phase one, phase two, phase three, or quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. Um, that would be another way that you would use labels to filter, for example. Here's another one, holiday shopping. Now, in, um, in contrast to the meal planning board, this is a traditional left to right flow. So you start with the cards on the left and those are the people for whom you want to get gifts, and then as you get an idea, you move it over, and that picture, by the way, of the yellow purse, I took that on the Trello iOS app from the iOS app. You can actually take a picture that automatically adds to a card. Um, so anyway, so you're moving them all the way on from left to right, um, all the way down to wrapped, and you can't forget wrapped because if you wrap it and you don't put a, a name tag on it and then you forget, so you know, I added that one in the workflow. So one of my favorite power-ups, and you've heard people talk about that for a little bit, power-ups are integrations with other apps and some other additional add-ons to make your boards more powerful. So if you enable a power-up called Package Tracker, you can actually, it's really easy, actually, you just add it to the, you add the uh, tracking link to the card, and it will embed this beautiful interface where it shows you exactly where the package is in transit. And it live updates. So right now it's in Wisconsin, and eventually it's gonna be delivered. Um, and I love this one because you can see. Now you can see in a business use case, this is also very useful um, you know, for like an office manager who's kind of tracking the mail. Who needs to track like information for uh, new hires, like their equipment, things like that. So definitely widely applicable. Love the package tracking power up. Another common use case, new hire onboarding. Um, we've all started a new job. It's kind of daunting. It's a little bit scary for those people, right? So we created this board, and this is, this is also an actual copy of a board that we use at Trello, and every one of my colleagues that you hear today went through this exact workflow. So if you see the second list on the left is uh, the first week hire, the, the new hire is like to-do list, right? So all they have to do, like it's kind of, I kind of, it's amazing. I remember doing this four years ago. It was like, okay, here's your list. Just go through each card, do what it says, move to done. It makes it a lot easier. It really decreases that anxiety, especially on your first day. And then there's other lists further to the right that are more like those storage repository lists. And those are sort of like frequently asked questions, information about the company, things like that. Um, so those are things that the employee can always reference even when it's not their first day. So this is sort of like their little home base. Um, and the other thing is this, is this is a template that you can copy because everyone has to do the same new things when they start on their first day. So you just copy it over every time and then um, it's just like a template. So the other thing about this board, if you'll notice, I know I did some left to rights and I did some boards where you're just storing information. This is actually a combo platter both your moving cards and there's repository. So that's another way to think about how you're gonna set up a Trello board. Another power up, one of my absolute favorites as a blogger is the Google Drive power up. So what you're looking at here is actually, um, the Google Drive power up is enabled 
and an entire folder is attached. And I love it because you can see the preview. Okay, and this is a team meeting board. Everyone has meetings, we love them, we hate them, <laughs> kind of both all at once. Um, and this is exactly what we do on the Trello marketing team. So every single Wednesday for four years, we have a meeting. And what happens is, during the week prior to the meeting, anyone who has an agenda item can just go to, these, go to the meeting list, add a card, add their name, maybe add a little bit of context, and that way, they're not gonna, when Wednesday comes around, they remember what they were gonna talk about because they just add it whenever they want. And then, as the meeting goes on, the lead is just going through each card, discussing it with the team, and then moving it. Is it in progress? Is it up next? Is it done? Maybe it's just a quick question. So this is really awesome because it's actionable. Um, it keeps the meeting flowing. It's not one person droning on. And you know, it actually changes the dynamic of a meeting because it's, it makes the meeting democratic, right? Everyone feels ownership over the meeting because they are all have added items themselves. So let's say that you get to an agenda item and you, the team discusses and it's like, hey, this is a great idea, but we're really not ready for this right now. We wanna do this maybe in quarter two. So they say, okay, well then, they turn on um, another one of my lesser known favorite power-ups, which is this card snooze. And as you can see right here, the team is snoozing the card until one month later. And what happens when you snooze a card, and you can choose the interval, you'll see, you can actually choose a custom interval or the ones on the list here. So what it does is it actually archives the card, and it archives it just for the time slot that you allotted. So that means when you are ready to tackle it, you don't need to remember, oh, what did we talk about a month ago, two months ago? It just automatically shows up back in the list exactly where you wanted it. I'm not a developer, so I just think it's magic. Okay. Yes. It's time for the lightning round of some of my favorite features that sort of make Trello both more useful, make it faster, um, make your visual like a little clearer, and also are just fun. Okay. So Trello has a ton of keyboard shortcuts, but my personal favorite is the letter Q. And that's because what it does is, if you're hovered over a board, all you do is press Q, especially on these busy boards, and it shows only the card for which you are on. So this one is amazing because it really cleans it up. There's a few boards where we have tons of cards on it, and all I need to see are these. It's perfect. And the way I remember it is, Q is for you. Right? Right? Okay, so here's another one. Um, so at the top of a Trello list, there's a little um, ellipses, and, or I like to call them kebabs. And what you do, people like, don't click it that often. I, you kind of forget it's there. But there's a lot of power in that little button. You can sort your list. You can sort them by the date they were last added, the number of votes. And actually, something we recently announced a few weeks ago, you can now sort by custom fields data, which is another very powerful power up. Um, so we, I love this one when you have those really long lists and you really only need to see what was recently added, things like that. You just want to get a clearer perspective. Um, people don't use it. I, lo I love this. Okay, the next one. Okay, this one is so simple, but it is so powerful. So when you have a card, especially a card that's been going on for like a, long, a longer term, and I manage an editorial calendar, so a lot of times it's like a month from a blog post going to like an idea all the way to publish. And in between, there's a lot of moving due dates, there's a lot of commenting back and forth, there's a ton of just like, where is it going in the lists? So a lot of times you get this card back activity that's showing all kinds of information. And that is useful information, sometimes you need to know it. But every once in a while I need to just, I only need to see the conversation back and forth. That's really the only thing that's relevant to me right now. So you click this little button, show high details. It's so simple, but so powerful. Um, admittedly, I was working at Trello for a year and a half before I clicked that button. Changed my life. 
Oh, I love this feature. Okay, so um, we all have someone at our company that loves spreadsheets, right? It's fine, spreadsheets are very powerful tools, but when you're ready to take some of that spreadsheet data and move it over to you know, add, add more context, add more action to it, it's kind of daunting, there's a lot, and, and most spreadsheets are longer than this one, as you all know. So I love this little feature in Trello. If you copy and paste a list, and it doesn't have to be from a spreadsheet, it can be any kind of like numbered ordered list, and you copy and paste it into a card, there's a little guy that prompts you, hey, that looks like a lot of items. Did you wanna make each one a card or did you just wanna do one? And I always respond out loud every time and I say, you know what, I did want nine cards. Thank you so much for asking, you know? So, again, with the magic is what I chalk it up to be. Um, but I love this because automatically you have nine cards, you can jump into the one you need, you can add more context, it's easy. And this is a great one if you're the person at your company trying to get everyone to use Trello, and I know there's a few of you out there. Um, it's features like these that you can demo and sort of say, okay, like, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be fun, and look, here's all your data. So definitely keep this one in mind. Ah, very useful. Okay, so for our Chrome users, we have a Chrome extension that you can install, and we built that in-house. And what happens when you install it is it allows you to search for Trello boards within the URL field of your browser, which I learned is called an omnibar. Um, so what happens is you're pressing T space, and then you're just searching for your Trello board. One of, one of, I have a few boards that I like live in every day kind of thing, but I have a few boards that I only reference, like I reference it maybe a couple times a week, and I don't even know the exact title, but the Chrome extension is actually smart enough, it, if you just know a few words, it will, it will actually show you a bunch of choices, one of which is inevitably the board you need, as you can see. Um, so I love this. this, this makes everything so much faster, so much easier. So definitely something worth checking out. That's the, that's the Chrome extension. I had to leave you with a fun one because it's Trello. And like I said, Trello is an incredibly powerful tool, but that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be fun, right? We really believe that at our core. So I just want everyone in this room to know that GIFs work as board backgrounds, okay? It's, <laughs> You know, maybe you just want your Trello board to hustle like the 70s. I don't know. There's a lot of gifts. Maybe you just want to play a joke on your friends. Maybe you just really want a shimmering disco ball to help you with your productivity. So, I, I, you know what, I don't know. I just really wanted everyone to know that. And as Michael said, we are giving away Trello Gold. As, you mentioned, as, I'm, um, as I'm, I demonstrated, there's a few, uh, a few of the features are power-ups, and um, Trello Gold gives you a, a few more power-ups that you can activate per board. Thank you.